Hello, and welcome to the Capital Wasteland. More specifically, to Tenpenny Tower. Throughout this bigot's high-rise are a number of small details that we can discover, and now that I have, I present to you five secrets you may have missed in Fallout 3's Tenpenny Tower. Starting us off, we have something quite peculiar that other traders just don't seem to do. Tenpenny Tower is home to a number of elitists who only offer the finest of things to the finest of people. The player can put up with their insults or claim a little compensation by digging through the deep pockets of citizens such as Lydia Montenegro or Anthony Ling. If the player does steal from one of these characters, they will comment that the security can't keep thieves out. Oh, I can't believe it. With all of Gustavo's goons running around, they still let thieves come into my store and take things. I thought I was safe here. That's it. I'm leaving. I'll try my luck elsewhere. Ah, that's it. Tenpenny promised me safety and security. And that damn useless Gustavo lets thieves run amok. This is the last straw. I'm leaving. They will leave everything behind and head for the doors. If spoken to, they will say this. Where will I go? There must be somewhere safe out there. The only way to get them back inside is by killing Roy Phillips and completing the Tenpenny Tower quest. Tenpenny Tower is home to the retired Herbert Daring Dashwood. You might recognize that name from one of four stories broadcast on the Galaxy News radio frequency. Inside of Dashwood's suite, we can find his terminal. This is filled with people, locations, and creatures he has interacted with, visited, and killed throughout his many adventures. We can learn that he was rather fond of a brothel owner named Destiny, had a strange fascination with Robobrains, and the origins of the giant rad scorpion. According to Dashwood, the deadly giants used to be nothing more than a common household pet, known as the North American Emperor Scorpion. Before the bombs fell and life as we knew it changed forever, pet stores were filled with these things, which explains the vast population and frequent encounters. Tenpenny Tower is home to the friendly robot bartender, Shakes, although that's only because he's programmed to be. He's also programmed to charge ridiculous prices for drinks, and if there's one thing I won't pay for, it's overpriced beverages. In the Federalist Lounge is a terminal which controls Shakes' prices. If you want, you can select the Holiday Discount, which reduces the overall price by 10% but that still isn't cheap enough. Luckily, there is a VIP option which cuts the regular prices in half. Now that is more like it. Did you know that the idea of Tenpenny Tower was inspired by the Fiddler's Green Skyscraper in George Romero's Land of the Dead? When the zombie epidemic hit Pittsburgh, a merchant named Kaufman took over the center of Fiddler's Green and turned it into a City of the Living. Shortly after, he became corrupt and split the people into two groups, the rich and the poor. Everyone who could afford a place in Kaufman's Tower was perfectly safe, while those who couldn't were left to fend for themselves. This zombie-inspired theme could explain why the residents of Tenpenny Tower use the Z-word so frequently. I've already told you Tenpenny won't allow zombies to live here. That's right. You never know when they'll go zombie on your ass. There's a pack of zombies living nearby in some old tunnel. Chief Gustavo assures us that he's increased the number of the security team and will kill any zombies on site. The proverbial wasteland zombie with a predilection for raw human flesh. For the last time, no zombies allowed. And lastly, we have the love letter found in Susan Lancaster's room. Susan used to be a slaver at Paradise Falls, but left that life behind and bought her way into Tenpenny Tower. Here she has a very active sex life, sleeping with Dr. Banfield, Hawthorne, Dashwood, Tenpenny, and the married man Edgar Wellington II. If the player wants to create trouble in Paradise, then we can take the letter to Millicent Wellington, Edgar's wife. After reading the note, she becomes unstable and explains to her cheating husband, when she said till death do us part, she meant it. She then goes on to slaughter Susan and leaves Tenpenny Tower forever. No one bats an eye at this, by the way. I don't suppose there is someone else for you to talk to? Oh my god, 
This can't be real, but it's in his handwriting. Oh my God. He's dead. I'll kill him and her. They're both dead. This isn't happening. This isn't real. You broke your sacred promise. What are you talking about, dear? Is, is everything all right? Let me remind you. Till death do us part. that stupid man now that he's gone I'm lost. and there we have it five secrets you may have missed in fallout 3's tenpenny tower before you go i would like to remind you of five things you could do to support the channel comment like share subscribe and enable notifications thank you for watching and i will see you in the next adventure